Hey you guys, how's it going? Desavai here and welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator tutorial video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to conduct a full IFR flight for you guys to try out. Now please keep in mind before we begin, this is a beginner's guide, which means everything that I'm going to be teaching you in this video is just the basics to, you know, get an IFR flight started and how to conduct it. Um, I'm not going to be going into technical like super technical details or advanced procedures um, this is basically aimed towards people with like zero to little experience in the flight simulator and if you guys are one of those you know people go ahead and stick around till the end of this video to find out how to conduct a full IFR flight Now, before we be begin this tutorial you guys I'd like to request you guys to leave a like or dislike the video if you guys enjoyed it or if you guys hated it also leave down comments down below what you guys think of this series, these tutorials, and you know, just feedbacks and suggestions on how I can improve the content I'm delivering to you guys. And if you guys have not already, of course, subscribe and join the colony. And I, I have to mention this, my Discord server. Links will be in the description below. If you guys are not a part of it, go ahead and join that Discord server right now because um, yeah. I'm, I'm always active there and if you guys have questions want to get in touch with me that's a place to find me it's uh, it's not a place just for flight simulator right it's it's a it's a it's a gaming hub where you guys can find other players I've set a whole channel you know basically with a bunch of games set up that you guys can go ahead and join and look for other players converse and whatnot it's just it's just a, a gaming hub in general so go ahead don't forget you know to Join in if you guys have Discord. Again, links will be in the description below. And if you guys want to support me as a con content creator, whoa, slip of the tongue there, links to my PayPal donation link will be in the description below as well. Again, this step is not, you know, required, but it's highly appreciated. All right, you guys, without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> Alright you guys, to start things off, the very first thing that you guys are going to be doing is selecting the type of aircraft that you're going to be flying for this route. For this specific video, I'm going to be flying the Airbus A320 because this is just like the aircraft I like flying. But again, you guys can do uh, any aircraft or choose any aircraft you want. It's going to work fine. Um, but for this video, yeah, I'm going to be flying the Airbus A320. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to set our departure airport, right? So for this flight specifically, I'm going to select Nino Aquino International Airport. That's our training ground. And this is pretty much the International Airport of Manila, Philippines. So I'm going to go ahead and click set as departure. Okay. And you'll be prompt to select your starting point here. Uh, you guys can start at any runway you want. But for the sake of this video, since I'm going to be doing a full IFR flight, I'm going to be starting off from a gate. So I'm going to be selecting the legendary gate 33 and boom, that should be good. Next, we're going to select our arrival airport. So to keep this video short, I'm going to select a short route and I'm going to be selecting um, Clark International Airport as our arrival. Boom. So you can see we have an additional drop down um, option here for our departure and arrival. But the first thing we're going to manipulate is this panel over here just right below the aircraft select this is the type of flight that we are going to be flying right so this is the type of flight that yeah basically we're going to be conducting so you're going to have your vfr options your direct gps vor to vor and then you'll have your ifr options so for this video you guys since we're doing a short journey i'm going to be conducting the flight in an ifr low altitude airways that's what we're going to select but if you're doing long haul, long haul flights, you probably want to select high altitude airways. But uh, for this specific video, we're going to be going low altitude, right? Then we're going to go on to this section over here, departures. I'm just going to go ahead and click on direct. And then manipulate our approach here. So our approach to a Clark, I want to do an ILS approach on runway 20. Go ahead and click that and boom, it should spit out a flight plan for you. So pretty much this is the route that it's going to tell us to fly. And once we can click 
click on fly you guys you don't actually need to input anything else on the aircraft so once you get the aircraft started the flight plan is already going to be there and i'm going to be showing you guys i'm going to be showing you guys that just in a bit but that's pretty much how to set it up on the uh the world map page i guess and then all that's have to do is like select your flight conditions for the for for the day and you can go ahead and click on fly so without further ado guys let's get this started Okay, you guys, so I have the aircraft set up here in a cold and dark state. And the first thing that we are actually going to do is turn on the aircraft or get the aircraft started so that we can get in contact with ATC. So I'm going to move in to our overhead panel to get this started. Now, while we get this started up, um, if you guys don't know how to start up the Airbus A320, I suggest you watch my earlier videos on the Airbus A320 where I show you guys how to get this thing started up because I'm not going to be going into... To that in detail in this video but you could you know feel free to follow along and we'll, while we're waiting here to get the aircraft started i want to talk about ifr right what is what is ifr what is an ifr flight so ifr stands for instrument flight rules and basically to fly under these conditions you either need to be operating in higher altitudes or you're going to be basically flying into clouds so if you're going to be flying into clouds you need to operate under IFR conditions. So pretty much all airliners operate under IFR, uh, you know, flight conditions or flight rules or instrument flight rules. And to to actually operate under IFR, you would need your instrument rating. And in real life, I don't have that just yet. But, you know, since we are just flying the simulator, I am definitely <laughs> capable of IFR flights. And yeah, just, that's just like a small inter small introduction to what IFR is, if you guys didn't know. So essentially, yeah, airlines operate under IFR conditions. And you operate under IFR if you're going to be flying into clouds and uh, uh, flying high altitude airways. Basically, class A uh, airspaces, essentially, is when you will be operating under IFR. So there you go. So now that we got that started, we can then proceed to get our engine started. Um, and then we can go ahead and request our IFR clearance from air traffic control. So once you got the engine started and the aircraft is fully operational, we're going to open our checklist over here. So we're going to tune in, uh, tune in clearances right here. And then we're going to request for our IFR. We're going to request for our IFR clearance, you guys. Sorry, couldn't speak properly there. All right. So. So I'm not sure why it didn't read back to me there, but essentially it says Airbus A320 is cleared to Clark Airport as filed. Take off runway 24, climb and maintain 6,000 feet. Departure frequency 124.8. So we're going to read that back. And I think I turned off air traffic control. That's why I don't have the voice operated or the voice, you know, voice operators, you know, giving me the clearance and stuff. But essentially, it's here. So read back is correct. Contact ground 122.45 when ready to taxi. So um, we have to remember, you guys, uh, the altitude they initially assigned to us. So... In this case, we're going to be taking off runway 24 and we're going to be climbing and maintaining 6,000 feet. Now, if you have your, your air traffic controller turned on, uh, the voice should reach out to you or ATC voice should reach out to you. Uh, but for, I guess, for this video, I'm going to have to read it. So I'm going to have to have my comms opened up. But I'll, I'll be reading it out to you guys so you guys can follow along. So once we got that started, I guess now... It's time to request for pushback. And we do that by clicking ground services. Tune into ground and requesting for a pushback. Okay, so we got we got a reading from tower and they said or ground services rather, so our pushback request has been accepted. And we should be pushing back momentarily. Got to make sure that the 
parking brake is switched off, which it is. Okay, pushback has started. Okay, that's pretty fast. I didn't realize that if you turned off the ATC chat, all these commands are like instant, right? We don't need to wait for them. But I guess for realism, you guys want to make sure you you have that switched on. I have mine off apparently. I didn't know. So it should be a lot easier when someone is reading these uh we re reading these clearances back to you, you know what I mean? Anyway, Okay, so now that we got that done, we could set up our autopilot 6,000 feet. Um, I'm going to initially maintain runway heading, so our runway given was 24, so I'm going to set this to 240. Really quickly, there you go. And we're just going to maintain runway heading initially, right? Once we got that done, we could set our flaps. And pretty much from here, what we can do is we can start to request for our our taxi for IFR, right? So we just need to click on request taxi IFR. So Airbus A320 taxi 2 and hold short of runway 24 via Delta Alpha contact tower 118 decimal 4 when ready. So we're going to acknowledge taxi clearance. It's so weird that they're not actually reading this to me and I'm actually reading it off the ATC chat. Um, but nevertheless, we got uh, we got our taxi clearance to the runway, runway 24. And I'm going to go ahead and taxi uh, to the runway. I'm not going to be showing you guys that. Uh, so I'll catch you guys in a bit. All right, you guys, we are just right outside runway 24. We're just about ready to uh, request for our takeoff clearance. But before I do that, I'm going to be showing you guys our VFR map. So you guys can see, um, we already have the flight plan set up here on the VFR map. And take note, you guys, I did not input anything to the FMC. We just started up the aircraft and the flight plan was already there because we had already set that up in the main menu. So because we set that up in the main menu, the the flight plan was already inputted on uh, to the aircraft automatically. So you guys don't need to do it yourselves. So this is really beginner friendly for you guys uh, who are not familiar yet with the Airbus A320's FMC. But yeah, this is just a super basic way. It, it already did it for us. And even, even in landing, guys, you don't even need to set up the ILS frequency. From my understanding is it already sets it up for you, the ILS frequency. So you don't need to touch any of the comms over here. It's, it's already done that for you. So, yeah, I just wanted to show you the flight plan here. Uh, we're going to be stowing our VFR map uh, for now because we don't need it. And we're going to request for our takeoff clearance right here. So we're going to request takeoff clearance from Manila Tower. And Manila Tower comes back, Airbus A320, cleared for takeoff runway 24. So we're going to acknowledge the ta takeoff clearance and we're going we're gonna to start to get going here. I'm going to apply a little bit of throttle, or thrust rather, to get, us, to get us moving. And we're going to start lining up with the runway. And then just make sure, you know, at this stage, you want to make sure everything is set for your takeoff. So you have your runway heading inputted. You have your altitude, your initial climb to 6,000 feet, which air traffic controller gave us, inputted on the autopilot system. Uh, your flaps are set as well, or we have our flap set, which is good. So we're pretty much ready for our takeoff roll over here. Rotate speed is still going to be at 150 knots. And from here, I'm just going to apply full throttle. And we're off. So I'm going to keep this window open at all time because I don't have air traffic control switch on so I have to read everything so this is just going to stay there right 100 knots passing 120 coming at 150 and rotate positive rate of climb gear up okay autopilot can come on right now and just make sure we are holding runway heading and we are on climb to our altitude of 6,000 feet. Great. So, Airbus A320 contact departures on 124.8. All you need to do is tune in on departures over here. And contact departure. 
As simple as that. So pretty much all there is to an IFR flight is basically you're you're following air traffic control, right? And we're gonna lower our throttles to climb here. There we go. So yeah, like I said, um, essentially, essentially we're just following whatever air traffic control asks us to do, right? Now we're gonna get uh, the aircraft to fly our flight plan and the way we do that is click on engage manage heading mode and once you engage that it's going to follow the flight plan that we have set up in the main menu. And pretty much from here you guys you just pretty much need to uh, listen to what air traffic control is going to tell you to do, right? If you guys have if you guys have uh, air traffic control switch off like I do, you may want to have the ATC chat open so that you could read any instructions that's, you know, coming into you guys. I didn't realize that um, air traffic control was switched off for for this flight, and that's that's my that's my bad. It probably should have been turned on, but I'm gonna make do with it, right? So. Just to, just to show you guys, right? So we're going to open the VFR map. Right now, um, the aircraft is going to be turning to intercept our flight plan over here. Alright, so Airbus A320 departure. Continue as planned. Altimeter 2, Niner, Decimal 9 or 2. Pretty much, remember when we switched from Manila Tower and they said contact departures? So departures telling us to continue as plan. Altimeter 2, Niner, Decimal 9 or 2. So it's basically follow your flight plan you have created. That's what it's telling you to do. And there will be moments in this flight where an air traffic control is actually going to give us altitude increase or decrease. I don't know, they might tell us to uh, turn to a certain heading. Pretty much from here, you just need to watch out and listen and just um, wait for what air traffic controllers give you, right? Their instructions that they're going to give you. But we pretty much have our flight plan all set up here. And these are sort of your waypoints along the way. Uh, from personal experience here, I find that they give you instructions every time you reach like a sort of waypoint over here but I could be wrong so you're just going to have to you know keep an eye on your ATC chat or keep a listen if you have it switched on and right now like I said pretty much we are now stabilized at 6,000 feet we are going to intercept our flight plan here and autopilot is going to is going to fly the flight plan we have created and again to reiterate it for you guys to follow the flight plan you just need to click on engage manage heading mode and it's going to switch from your set heading to your flight plan that's pretty much it and yeah now all we need to do is just wait for air traffic controller to give us further instructions Okay, you guys, so we just received another instruction from air traffic for controller Airbus A320 contact middle is center and 128.3 and we're just going to acknowledge the handoff. So basically, we're just switching over from the departure frequency over to Manila center uh, frequency because we have already left the designated zone for departures. So we're just going to go ahead and pretty much acknowledge and contact Manila center as instructed by air traffic control. Now, at this point in time, you guys, I want to take this time to uh, to show you guys how to request for higher altitude or lower your altitude. So, pilots will always have the option to request for a higher altitude or lower altitude um, for for different reasons, right? It could be to avoid weather or whatnot, um, or let's say you know you lose air pressure in the cabin and you need to descend and stuff. So, the way you go about 
requesting uh, altitude increase and decrease is just you just need to request it by these two options over here number two and three so for demonstration purposes right we can go ahead and request for an altitude increase and you could increase it by a thousand two thousand three thousand four thousand it's completely up to you guys uh, for this one let's go ahead and try to request um, a higher altitude of a thousand feet and let's see what air traffic controller gives us okay so they said Airbus A320, climb and maintain 7,000 feet, and you, all you need to do is acknowledge the instructions, set it on your autopilot, and just, you know, click on uh, engage, selected altitude hold, and your aircraft should climb you to 7,000 feet. For you guys who can't see the panel, I'm going to zoom it in a little bit closer, so we're on open climb climbing to 7,000 feet and once we get to 7,000 feet aircraft should start leveling off cool and as you can see we're still pretty much uh, flying our flight plan over here and we're going to continue this until air traffic controller gives us another instruction on what to do Okay guys, um, we have just been given instructions by tower again, Manila tower. So it, it says descend and maintain 3,600 feet and contact Clark approach on 119.2 as you can see over here. So we're going to start lowering our altitude to 3,600 feet as instructed. And we're going to tune in Clark approach. Essentially we are now you know on our way down and we're preparing for our arrival to Clark is essentially what it is so we contacted we're now with Clark approach uh, we've entered their vicinity and pretty much right now we just need to follow whatever altitude they give us and follow their instructions so again they gave us 3600 feet to descend to I've set it in the autopilot over here and we are now descending as you can see to 3600 feet and it's completely up to you if you want to fly at a slower speed um, I'm gonna leave it on climb and we'll begin to slow our speed down as we approach Clark uh, Airport okay so uh, Clark Clark approach has instructed us to descend and maintain 4,500 feet so I'm going to acknowledge that and we're going to increase that to 4,500 as instructed by Clark and I'm going to set a descent rate here of 1,200 feet Let's go ahead and read uh, just the backlog here. Okay, so it descend and maintain 4,500 feet. Expect ILS runway 20 via Delta 106 Mike transition clear to Delta 106 Mike Airbus 320. So we're just basically going to follow that. Um, descend and maintain 4,500 feet and apparently we're cleared the ILS approach. Okay, you guys, so now again, we have re received another instruction to maintain, descend and maintain 3,000 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and just and do that just right now and set the altitude to 3,000 feet. And we're going to descend and maintain it as air traffic control um, instructed us to do. And, you know, at this point in, in time or at this stage of the flight, this is where you want to consider uh, slowing down for your for your approach. So I'm probably going to cut the speed back over here. I'm going to set our speed rather. Uh, start bleeding it out. I want to be cruising at about 180 knots or 170 knots, right? Set up for our arrival. Let the speed come back there. And then in just a few moments, we're going to be setting our stages of flaps for landing. Okay, so right about here, I'm going to set our first stage of flap. 
so that we don't we don't stall out at 170 uh, 170 knots and we could go to second stages of flaps that should be fine and we're just pretty much going to uh, continue our descent to 3,000 feet and the aircraft is still going to be um, flying our flight plan over here and take note you guys I have not turned on the ILS info so um, I'll let you guys know on when you can turn it on actually you can even probably turn it on right now it's not a big issue and as you can see ILS have shown up because it's already been inputted in the main menu that we are going to be landing in 2-0 via ILS so I you could you guys could you guys notice I didn't touch uh, the frequencies over here or the the nav radio it was automatically done for me on the main menu so it was already you know inputted on the system and you can see it's working by the diamonds over here just zoom in here so you guys can get a closer look diamonds here here um, indicating that we have detected the localizer and the glide slope of the runway so pretty much right now um, we're stabilized at 3,000 feet as instructed. We're still continuing our flight plan over here and we're just going to keep going until they give us further instructions, you guys. Okay, guys, we have been given instructions again from air traffic control to descend and maintain 2,600 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Descending 2,600 feet. We're going to acknowledge the instructions and we're going to continue uh, flying our flight plan. I didn't touch anything yet. Um, I didn't switch on the ILS yet. I didn't switch on localizer mode or approach mode. Uh, we're still flying our managed heading, which is our flight plan that we have, uh, we have inputted on the system or on the main menu rather. And we're just going to wait here for further instructions from air traffic control. But I normally turn on loc mode once we are established on final approach. It's pretty much safe to uh, switch it on at that point. And yeah, so pretty much just continue flying this, uh, continue flying this route. So right about here, you guys, um, we're pretty much established on like a final approach for the runway. I can comfortably, comfortably turn on the loc mode and case to case basis, it does switch to approach mode automatically. In our case over here, it did not. So we're going to leave it at loc. That's fine. We're still the pink diamond hasn't come down to the center just yet. So once it reaches the center, we could go ahead and turn on approach. And now we could uh, prepare for our arrival. We could put the gears down. We have the runway visually ahead of us. Uh, make sure that our speed brakes are armed for arrival. Okay, so Airbus A320, you are 10 miles north of Clark. Contact Clark Tower 118 decimal 7 when inbound on the approach. Acknowledge approach clearance and then we could tune in on Clark Tower. Contact Clark Tower. So Airbus A320 Clark Tower cleared ILS runway 20 approach altimeter 29er niner decimal niner 2 wind 272 at 20 cool so pink diamond yellow line approach mode on we're going to start to descend so pretty much we have been cleared the ILS approach I'm going to start bleeding our speed to our final approach speed of 150 knots and I'm going to be setting um, full stages of flaps here. So you guys can see um, runways ahead of us. Got we're we're pretty much uh, center of the runway, and we're descending towards the runway. And here, Airbus A320 clear to land runway two zero wind two seven two at two zero. We're going to acknowledge that and we're just going to continue flying this. Uh, looks like we got a bit of a strong wind, but that's okay. We're just going to continue flying this approach. So pretty much we're clear to land runway 20, you guys. And at this point in time, you can see on our VFR map, like we have just, we've flown the entire flight plan essentially. And we could close this 
and we could close the ATC as well to prepare for our landing and just sort of enjoy this uh, final approach uh, into Clark International Airport got a bit of a windy approach here as well that should be fun a little bit I'd say we'll probably land a little bit to the right again I don't have a joy-con just yet or a flight stick so I tend to leave the autopilot engage throughout this landing so we're not always going to be on runway center line uh, as much as I'd want to and from here you know I mean I, I would I would start flying manually but really it's such a pain to fly with a keyboard again near impossible you guys near impossible so we're just gonna leave it to we're gonna leave it to autopilot here got a 150 on our speed here flap set the full gears are downed and we have our speed brakes armed pretty much all that's left to do is uh, land the aircraft right Got a very windy approach here. That should be fun. 100. 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, Ooh. Really hard to control with the keyboard. That was a really bad landing. Do not follow my example. But, uh, again, there's only so much I can do with a freaking keyboard, right? Rudder pedals are on my keyboard as well. But we, we landed safely. <laughs> no damages to the aircraft, I hope. Really bad landing there. So don't, you don't need to follow my landing. You know, if you have a, if you have a flight stick on you guys, it should be a lot easier for you. You don't need to re rely on a autopilot so much but anyway guys that's pretty much a full IFR flight and how to land you know via IFR conditions rather that's a simple beginner's guide to get you up and running for those of you guys uh, who are not familiar you know with IFR procedures and stuff it should be easy to follow so I hope you guys did enjoy enjoy this video if you guys did enjoy it found it informative don't forget to leave a like comments for suggestions and feedbacks and if you guys have not already of course subscribe and join the colony take care guys once again i will catch you in the next video